What is going on guys? Welcome to the next part of our Kellner Channel tutorial mini series within our Python mathematics and finance 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 indicators. Uh, last video I was telling you all about the Kellner Channel and this one we're actually going to go ahead and uh, program it into Python. So if you don't already have a lot of the data, uh, we're going to need two things, actually three things now because I decided to make you guys' lives even easier. If you don't have the sample data, uh, go to syntax.com, hover over about us, click on uh, tutorials. I think there's also a link, there will be a link in the description to head here. Uh, we'll click on this and I'll take you to this page here. Uh, and here you need, basically we're going to actually make quite a few stops. Uh, we need average true range, we want the code for that. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab the code from there and make sure that it didn't get messed up. So my little code poster thing, it likes to uh, switch out the greater than and less than signs with uh, like URL encoding for it, it's very annoying. Uh, so the next thing, we want that. We wanna get the starting code for our calculation videos and then also you're gonna want your sample data and then we'll eventually get the other code. But uh, the first thing, we've got average true range here and we want to pull the sample code which is here. Let me make sure, yeah, see like we have the less than or eight. Let me fix that right now. All right, let's try again and yes, okay, so I fixed them now. Uh, so the first thing we'll want to do is actually we won't even need that other thing since right here. So what we can do is just copy and paste this entire uh, code for ATR because we really, we need ATR so we're going to make a few changes to this code. Uh, but ATR is really an integral part to the Keltner channel, so we might as well just copy and paste all of that. And actually, that's the only thing we need to copy and paste because um, the rest of what we'll be coding ourselves now, for now. In the next video, we'll get the other code that we need. So this is the data we need, and let's just go ahead and make sure it works. Let's run this. Uh, make sure you also have the sample data and everything lined up. Because uh, if you don't have the sample data, uh, you'll want to grab that as well and save that to like just copy and paste all this and save that uh, to sample data.txt. Basically, this file right here because that's what it's referencing. Okay, so we got TR working now. So now we actually want to uh, work on the calculation of. Um, well, first we should kind of fix ATR because uh, I don't really like the way it's looking at the moment. Maybe we'll actually replace the current uh, <laughs> example of ATR with this one. Um, so we want to have like one big grand ATR uh, function first of all and also let's move exponential moving average uh, to the top here then uh, let's define ATR because it worked fine like this kind of worked fine when all we wanted to do is plot an ATR but um, when we want to use ATR in another formula, it, this just becomes like a huge massive mess and just not a very good way to do it. So uh, we'll fix that. So anyway, uh, tab everything over now. So we've got a nested function, you know. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and comment that out. We don't need to print that anymore. And the rest of this uh, should be fine for now. We don't need this anymore, and we print ATR. Now we can actually uh, have this return the ATR. Cool. So that should be all the modifications. Actually, yeah, let's. Uh, we need to pass that through, and uh, we need to pass through ATF. And that should be it. Okay, because the regular time frame is just for exponential moving average. So that's good. Okay, we'll find out soon enough if we're um, massively screwing up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to define KELT to create these Keltner channels. And KELT is only going to need two things, TF and ATF. Um, ATF just stands for another time frame. <laughs> so that's what that's all about. Let me make some space. Okay, so now we're going to have this function is going to return three lines basically. So the first line will be UL for upper line, the second line will be ML for middle line, the third line will be LL for lower line. Next we're going to say ATR equals ATR. 
And then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste all of these values because that's what we're passing through, right? So copy and paste those from above. And then also we have to paste in or push through ATF. ATF applies to our ATR. Um, so if you can't remember, that's a good way to remember it. Just in case for your, uh, for your, final, uh, your final exam here at Centex University. Um, good at study tips. Now, what we want to do is TFEMA equals X moving average. <sighs> and the prices we want to use, close prices, and the time frame is TF. Next, we're going to say TFEMA. It's one digit too long because it's not going to match uh, our exponential moving average, so uh, or our date, rather. Anyway, TFEMA really needs to be one colon. So, uh, TFEMA equals TFEMA one colon, all set. Next, x equals zero. Next, wow, x. Wow, x is less than the length of TFEMA. What in the heck do we want to do? Well, we're going to say um, current um, upper line equals TFEMA x plus... And if you recall, it was 2 times ATR, X. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste this and make the necessary modification. So, paste, paste. This will be a minus down here. This won't even exist here. Current middle line, current lower line. Awesome. And in fact, I'll do y'all another solid. I forgot to zoom in when I started actually typing stuff. So we'll do that now. And if you feel like you're behind or something, pause it here, and this is a good little frame to catch up. Next, um, what we want to do is uh, ul.append uh, cur ul. Then we're going to say ml.append uh, curml. Not to be confused with caramel. ll.append curl. Now, uh, x plus equals 1. We've exhausted that while loop. When we have done that, we want to return ul, ml, ll. Finally, ul, ml, ll equals kelt. And we want to use a 20 and a 10 for our moving or our, uh, time frames. And um, that's about it. That's all we need to do. So just to see that we've succeed, or successfully done something, Let's just print UL and see what happens. Okay, so we printed out some other stuff, probably for ATR, but this is our uh, upper line, and the numbers look to be somewhat legitimate since uh, it should just be plotting right above uh, the price, and we're using Starbucks here as our sample data, and so those prices look normal. So now we believe we are ready to go ahead and port this over to our charting application and plot this bad boy up. So, that's what we'll be doing in the next video. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.